your brothers and sisters in Christ. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 to 28, we're told about Moses and what was going through his mind as he was growing up. Moses in the book of Exodus, we're told, was quite of a nice success story. He was born into a Jewish family, but at the time the law of the land was that the Jewish boys who were born needed to be killed, tossed into the Nile to drown. Well, by God's grace, Moses had a mother who obviously couldn't bear the thought of killing her own son, so she did what she could to try to help him. She put him in a basket and placed him in an area where Pharaoh's daughter bathed. And by God's grace again, Pharaoh's daughter took compassion on Moses and, and took her into his home to raise him as her own son. What an amazing thing God was able to do for Moses so that he could live and not be killed like so many other baby boys were during that time. But we're told during that told that while he grew up and he grew up in that in the palace life, Moses didn't indulge himself in the palace life. He didn't indulge himself in the luxuries of Egypt. And we're we're told why. We're told that it's because he looked ahead and he saw that it was better to be counted as an Israelite, as God's people, instead of as one of the Egyptians. But why? I mean, it looks foolish on paper when you think about it. I mean, you got the Egyptians, they're the powerful nation, the superpower of the world, the best schools, best of everything, the best luxuries, and being in the palace, Moses could have whatever he wanted. And meanwhile, you have the Israelites. They were slaves. They were thought less than human. The people of Egypt didn't care about them at all. So why do you think Moses would have wanted to be counted with the people of Israel? It was more than just nationalism, knowing his roots, knowing where he came from, because it appears that he had a relationship with his family even as he grew up in the palace which proved to be very beneficial for Moses because of the main reason why he stuck with the Israelites, why he was even willing to suffer as a slave. It's because he could see that being counted with God and his people meant being saved. Not saved from an earthly slavery, though that did happen. Moses was the one who led them out but to be saved from an even greater slavery, slavery of sin. Sin torments us, torments us all. Sin is the reason why we make mistakes. It's the reason why we can't stop making mistakes. We're not perfect, and that's a problem. Because we know deep down in our hearts, God demands perfection. Even Moses who would eventually write down the Ten Commandments that God gave him. He already knew them. And that's because they're written in our hearts. We have this natural knowledge of right and wrong. That's a gift from God. But sometimes it doesn't feel so much like a gift. Because not only do we know what's right and wrong, we know that we haven't always been right. We haven't lived as God wants us to live. And because of that, we know that God should be angry with us. And that's scary. But Moses wasn't scared to be associated with God. And that's because through his parents, his birth parents, he learned about the promises that God gave to Adam and Eve and to Abraham. That there would be one who would come and crush our sins, destroy them, who would save us from them so that we could be with God forever. And for Moses, if that meant he had to suffer as a slave, then so be it, because he knew that his suffering would only be temporary, but his, but his bliss and his joy with God would be eternal. And in the same way, the pleasures of this world, as great as they might have been, were only temporary, but in the end they only lead to eternal damnation, where there is endless suffering. Moses could see that because God had given him faith. Faith is a gift of God. We receive faith from God, and we receive it 
through his word. When we hear about what God has done for us and saving us, he convinces us. There isn't anything special in us that causes us to believe. No, God simply just convinces us, brings us to know that what he is saying is absolutely true and we can trust him. On our own, we could never trust God. In fact, on our own, it looks foolish to follow God. And the world would agree. Egypt would have agreed that Moses was foolish for becoming a slave instead of enjoying the life of palace living. But with faith, that, that beautiful gift, Moses could see he actually made the right choice. That following God, though painful, was actually better. Because it gave him eternity. Eternity with him in heaven. We too who have, we too have faith through the word of God. Because God gave it to us. God has also convinced us to know that he is the Savior. And that even though sometimes it might look that the world is better off, that the world has great treasure that we want to chase, we know that it's temporary, that it will not last forever. But God's promises do. His eternal life does. And that means we will have joy with Him. And so we can see with faith that sticking with God is better by far. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for letting us see the truth that you are our Savior, that you have given us so much, so much more than this world could ever offer us. Help us keep our focus on you. Help us look at you with, through our eyes of faith that you have given us so that we never lose sight of what is true, what is real, and what is ours, and what is eternal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the Lord bless your day.